Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome to episode number 202 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, we are going to dive back into the acne topic. And this is going to be an interesting one, folks, because we've talked about nutrients that you need to help with acne, gut issues that can cause acne. But today we're going to be talking about specific nutrient supplements that can actually trigger acne. This topic is not a brand specific problem. It's actually the nutrient. So even switching a multivitamin, something as simple and as normally helpful as a multivitamin could actually trigger the onset of acne or cause your acne to flare. My guest today has been on the show before. Her name is Lacey Dunn, and I'm excited to have her back to share this with you guys. For those of you who may not know Lacey, she is a functional medicine dietitian specializing in physique enhancement, weight management, thyroid disorders, PCOS, adrenal fatigue, and metabolic resistance through her online coaching platform called Uplift Fit Nutrition. She's also the host of Uplift Fit Nutrition Radio. Lacey's goal as a dietitian is to provide the tools that people need in order to achieve a healthy and balanced diet while simultaneously helping them grow and thrive in all aspects of their lives. Her book, The Women's Guide to Hormonal Harmony, gives women the knowledge, tools, and confidence to rebalance your hormones, master your metabolism, and become the boss of your own body, no matter if you've got a thyroid disorder, hormonal imbalances, or gut problems. So with that said, let's jump into today's conversation. Thank you so much for coming back to the show. I'm super excited to have you here again. You were a guest, uh, I guess about a year ago, and we have a lot to talk about. So I really appreciate you making the time. I know you're busy, but thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jennifer. I'm so excited. I loved being here last time. So today we're going to talk about something I'm super passionate about because I've been through the woodworks with it. I know. So let me set the stage. Um, A good friend of mine had started taking a multivitamin. And for many of you who've had acne issues, you might relate to this where you start taking something and all of a sudden you see this like outbreak of acne. And so she went to her esthetician and the esthetician was like, oh, well, did you recently start any supplements? Did the supplements have any biotin in them? Now, the supplement that she was taking did not have a ton of biotin because some of the hair, skin, nail formulas have so much biotin in it. Um, It ended up not being the multi, but it was the first time that I had ever really heard that biotin or any nutrient could actually cause (laughs) to cause acne. And so acne is not my wheelhouse, which is why I love having guests like yourself on the show to really talk and dive deeper into this. But When I told you this story before we started, this really resonated with you. Why? Why did this story resonate with you so much? Because I have been there. I've done that. I've gone through that chaos. And it's happened for many of my clients as well. So when we're looking at acne, for the most part, we're questioning first and foremost, what do my hormones look like? What does my gut look like? What does my liver look like? But other than that, if you have random acne out of the blue, it could be really maybe a food, but also maybe a supplement you started. And I see this time and time again, when people switch from one multivitamin to another multivitamin, or they think, oh, hey, maybe I need some B12 for my energy, or maybe let me add some biotin for extra hair growth. They don't think about it, but sometimes these ingredients can cause acne flare-ups. I know for myself, I was like, okay, you know, I ran out of my multivitamin. One of my favorite ones. It's the designs for health. And so I switched over to a um, organic organic um, life one that I found at Whole Foods. And I was like, oh, it's just a normal organic multivitamin. And I didn't look at, oh, hey, it's higher in B12. It's higher in biotin. And I switched over to it. I kid you not, I was one day in, like 12 hours in, and I had three different cysts, cystic acne, blasted up on my face. And I was like... There's no way. 
And I looked up, I kid you not, I looked at those ingredients. I knew some ingredients could cause flare-ups. And I was like, yep, it was the multivitamin. And it happens to my clients too. They'll be like, Lacey, I just had a lot of, I uh, uh, had a huge acne flare this past week. I don't know what's up. And I'm like, okay, what'd you do? What'd you switch out? They're like, well, I tried this new <laughs> multivitamin. I'm like, did I tell you first and foremost to do a new multivitamin? They're like, no. I'm like, okay, what'd you try? And I kid you not, most of the time when you make those switch, it is that multivitamin, whether it's the B12, the biotin, sometimes it's even higher dose vitamin D, B6. All these things sometimes can aggravate acne. Why? Like that is kind of mind boggling. Like why would those nutrients, which we need, and and I will also add to this, a lot of people with skin issues are like, especially with D, they're a deficient. It's really they common are. to be deficient in D. Um, I found, I would say about in my practice, and I don't know what the percentage is in yours, but I would say a good like 25 to 35% of people are pretty much deficient in B12. A lot of them need B6. So why would these really healthy nutrients that our body needs, why would they trigger an acne flare? In the literature, they quote unquote, don't know. <laughs> One of the um, <laughs> guesses is that it causes an overgrowth of some bacteria. I don't know how to spell out their name. But my feeling is when we have too much, maybe too much B12, too much vitamin D is causing an upregulation in our collagen production. And if we don't properly sloth that away, that's blocking the pores and then causing the acne and the pustules to form. So that is what I think happens as well as just the aggravation overall, sometimes on a kind of like a liver basis, if there's too much being thrown at it and it's got to detoxify everything. Um, it's very interesting things and it doesn't happen to everybody the vitamin d is more of a threshold effect but hands down the high dose vitamin b12 and the biotin and the b6 i see those a lot so with for let's so let's talk about b12 for example like do you have a an idea like is it like a thousand micrograms two thousand micrograms is there a certain red flag threshold where you're like "Ooh, if you're acne prone that might not be a good idea to increase especially i always tell people look therapeutic doses you should really work with somebody to manage that because i get nervous when people are like yeah i'm taking five thousand micrograms a day of b12 and i'm like why who's been monitoring your levels <laughs> so so like with B12, what do you find the, um, what amount do you find to be problematic? It really depends if the person is acne prone or not. First and foremost, if somebody's very acne prone, I've had a couple clients to where we can't even touch B12 when they're in the midst of having flare ups. Yeah. We have to go with a multivitamin without biotin, without B12. And I kid you not, that's hard to do, but, um, yeah, it really depends. And I, Typically, I see that a thousand be a threshold for people that are acne sensitive. Oh, that's interesting. And how about biotin? Because biotin's a funny thing. Small amounts can actually mess up your labs. You guys know I've talked about that on yes. the show before. So biotin is a it's an important nutrient, but how much biotin could be problematic for somebody who's acne prone? Oh, great question. So one fifty, I think it's UGs. I've seen that. Anything above that cause a flare. So a little baby bit of biotin, I kid you not, can cause a flare. And th that's what it does to me. Even anything over just a baby bit will cause me to have automatic cystic acne. So for you, a hair, skin, and nail formula that's got like 2,000. <laughs> I, I blow up. Let me see if I can pull this one up. Um yeah, just a baby bit of biotin will cause me to have a flare. And it, it's it's crazy. I know I started um, when I had my candida, I was doing a candida support by now. And it had a baby bit of biotin. And I, was, and I didn't even look at it. I didn't even think about it. I was like, oh, I just need to clear my candida. And the 12 hours after I started it, automatically cystic acne. I was like, damn, I did it again. My goodness. So in, in the case of somebody who has tested out adding these nutrients themselves or they're, they're playing around with a multivitamin, what do they like? What what do you do? It sort of seems like you're you're damned if you do damned if you don't. You need the nutrients because your body doesn't make them. Does this apply to food sources as well that are high in these nutrients or just mostly the supplemental forms? I honestly mostly see it in the synthetic supplemental form. Okay. So, and, and, and let's, let's add to this. Let's like 
drill down a little bit further, would this be like methylcobalamine, which is the activated form of B12 versus, say, cyanocobalamin, or it doesn't matter the form of B12, just the amount is more problematic? I have not played around with that because <laughs> I, I guess I've not wanted to test people as like a guinea pig and be like, let's try this out. I could test myself. I will erupt with my face, but I definitely see when it comes down to, you know, the comp gene, the MTF, a MTHFR gene that with the methyl, of course, does matter. But with acne, I have not seen anything just yet. Mm. Interesting. Let me know if I need to experiment this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I, w- I wonder if listeners might be like, yeah, Lacey, could you try that out on yourself? I- I'd rather. <laughs> <laughs> I typically, anyways, I give a mix of methyl and adenyl hydroxy B12 anyway. I always look for a mix because I do find that a lot more people have a sluggish comp gene than mm thought which if you add too much methyl then you have anxiety increase your sugar depression so i definitely try to go for the mix anyway so maybe better safe than sorry <laughs> go with the mixture yeah if, and if you have other factors going on because the listeners know that acne and other skin issues are there's usually a constellation of things going on mm-hmm. right so there's usually gut issues there's usually liver issues I think for acne, there can absolutely 100% be like a sex hormone component to it as 100%. well. 100%. Do, could your sensitivity to the nutrients improve at all as you improve or rebalance some of these other areas? Or is it sort of like one of those things where like you find out you're really sensitive to biotin and you're just kind of like, can't, you just can't do it really? Yeah, it definitely what I see is women, they feel their very best with their skin at the very beginning of their menstrual cycle when that estrogen is predominating and it's giving you that youthfulness, helping with that collagen production. And then upon ovulation, when progesterone kind of like dries things up, I see people have a flare up. So if you're adding in the nutrient then plus ovulation, plus the progesterone spike, that's when I start to see that, that PMS type of hormonal acne. Oh, interesting. So it might even depend. All right. So now we've thrown another whole piece into this. Oh, there's so, so may... many pieces to acne flares. <laughs> it's so confusing. <laughs> so, so, so another piece is, especially for, for women who are listening, may be that menstrual cycle, really getting familiar, starting to track your cycle. There's plenty of apps, by the way, guys, you can like download on your phone to start tracking your cycle, which I, you know, I even find to be very enlightening. It's helpful to see where you're at with things, but that may even impact your reactivity to those nutrients, depending on where you are in that cycle. Topicals as well. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. So let's talk about topicals. Like what type of topicals do you find that could actually trigger a flare? What is what is like for you? What has been a problem? So I am what you call an over exfoliator. So I am really bad at over exfoliating my skin. <laughs> Which is bad news bears when it comes down to your skin health, because what we can do is we can over damage our skin. So when we put on maybe retinoids or AHAs and BHAs, these are exfoliants. Well, the AHAs and the BHAs. And what can happen is we can over exfoliate our skin. And when we over exfoliate our skin, we over dry our our skin, we irritate it and we damage our skin lining, our skin barrier. And then what happens is we have irritated, flaky, red, itchy skin that then tries to heal itself and it can erupt in acne. And that's when you might even notice like the little just milia, little bumps on your skin. You can have postules, even cystic acne, all as a flare as kind of like a warning sign. Hey, I am inflamed. I need help. And I've done this before. And I know other people that have as well doing a retinoid and then thinking, okay, I'm doing good on this retinoid and then not taking breaks from the retinoid. So causing flares because of that or mixing things like salicylic acid with a retinoid or benzoyl peroxide with a retinoid, those things can definitely 100% damage your skin barrier. You have to very much go slow. And like I said, throughout your menstrual cycle too, maybe if you throw in a brand new retinoid right after ovulation, you are at risk and prone to breakout potentially because of that. Mm. 
that's fascinating. It is I, fascinating. I know, I know for me, I have to be really careful what I put on my skin. I have like a totally different problem, which is very costly if I have to fix it because I got to get stuff burned off my face, actually. It's not fun. Um, so I can appreciate the frustration that people go through, even though I am not acne prone to... to um, it's just like you want your skin to just be calm and you feel like in some respects, no matter what you do, uh, you're stuck, you know? Um, so and people make you, that mistake. They, do you know how we do. throw in supplements, like thinking we need, oh, I need B12 or I need biotin to make my hair grow. People do that with skincare. So they think, oh, I need to use this new lotion. I need to use this new toner. I need to use this glycolic acid. They, many people, they don't know what those ingredients do. That's a problem. And then they throw too many ingredients on the skin and they aggravate it. And then it's going to reach out via acne. Just like when we put too much on our liver, we have problems with liver detoxification and we might have acne. Our skin is the same way. It purges and it asks for help. Can I ask you, for somebody who's struggling with cystic acne, if they present to you and they're like, Lacey, I really need help because I know that you do work with acne in your mm -hmm. practice. What do you generally look for with cystic acne? Like, are there sort of like um, red flags that you're like, well, that we got to look down this rabbit hole. I know that's the case for me, depending if somebody has like eczema or psoriasis or dent, there's certain other little tweaks to how I'm looking at their case. It's a little different from somebody else's. Yes. I love that. Cystic acne is a demon for those that don't know it is just like a bubble under your skin. It is not poppable and it does not come to head and it's filled with fluid and it hurts. It hurts. will hurt to move your, your uh -huh. mouth, your body. Yeah. Most of the time with cystic acne, first and foremost, I'm looking at, okay, what is causing that inflammation? So I look at the diet. Is it maybe a reaction to a food like dairy? For me, if I eat ice cream, <laughs> which I have a few marks on my face because I wanted ice cream, um, that, that will cause a cystic flare. So Diet, first and foremost, poor liver detoxification. I look at the gut, gut infections, things like SIBO, candida, H. pylori is an acne demon. Um, and then what I also want to do is look at hormones, estrogen dominance, heavily high testosterone, high DHT. These things will cause flares specifically in cystic and overall acne in general. And then I see a lot of people with cystic acne as well, misuse topicals. So when we're looking at cystic acne, cystic acne responds to different topicals than other acne treatments so if you throw on benzoyl peroxide but you don't you're not using salicylic acid to go into the pores and really it's salicylic acid is a bha and that is going to go in the the pores and it's going to penetrate into exfoliate those dead skin cells so if you're not using salicylic acid and benzoyl peroxide together sometimes cystic acne it does not do the job with just benzoyl peroxide. So it really depends on what's going on internally as well as externally. And those topicals can make a big, big difference. Can we talk for a moment a little bit about testosterone? I know you mentioned testosterone is a part of this, as is DHT. What is DHT for those who are listening? So DHT, when we think DHT, we're thinking of male pattern, hair loss, oily skin, acne, aggression, things that typically are causing men prostate issues. But women, we can also have an issue when it comes down to what's called our 5-alpha reductase activity. So with 5-alpha reductase, think of it like the metabolization of your testosterone. So you can either make etiocalanolone or androsterone. Androsterone is when your pathway flowing down you flowing down that 5 alpha pathway and that 5 alpha pathway produces that DHT, which is actually 3 times more androgenic than your other pathway, your etiocalanolone. So we have one pathway we want to prefer that is not DHT. We want to make etiocalanolone, not androsterone. Sometimes it, people make more of one than the other. 5-alpha preference genetically, and it doesn't cause them an issue. But if you're making too much of that androsterone, too much DHT, that's when many people have the PCOS type of hair loss, mm -hmm. oily skin, acne, aggression. And the downside is many people don't, or many practitioners don't check DHT in the blood. And you can have normal testosterone levels, but high DHT. And the people are like, okay, why am I having high testosterone-related symptoms? It could be that 5-alpha preference. So if you have cystic acne, 
what I'm gathering from this conversation is that getting your hormones tested is probably a crucial piece. I don't know. I, I guess the other question, because I'm always a big fan of like, we've got to be careful. The order that we do things in matters, right? So right. if somebody's listening to this and they're just at the beginning of their journey, like, should they do hormone testing or are there some other things that they should maybe start with? I know that you talk a lot about this, of all this stuff in your book, The Women's Guide to Hormonal Harmony, which um, is like this huge Bible, basically. It's like 400 pages long. I can't believe you wrote a 400 page book. I mean, not that like I can't believe it, but it's just incredible to do such such an amazing feat. Thank you. Um, so what what is the order for acne? If someone's dealing with acne, especially cystic acne, is there a certain order that they should start doing things in to help them? Because you and I are both the same, I feel like, in this. Like, I don't want to waste money, and I don't like wasting right. people's money. And if you, I have found, at least with, with other skin issues, if you do certain testing too early, you can waste money mm -hmm. because it, it will change down the road and you'd rather know where that testing is down the road once some other more foundational things. So so in your book, in terms of acne, uh, as, it, as it's concerned, like, is there a bit of an order to go if you're looking at testing and whatnot? I love that. So I start with blood work for hormones, first and foremost. I want to look at nutrient status if possible. And then I start with the gut. Hands down. Most acne issues, I would say 85% of acne issues stem from some shape or form of overgrowth in the gut. I've gotten to the point where I've told, told clients, okay, if we do not find anything in your gut at all on this GI map, I will refund you. And they're like, okay, cool. I'm like, I know what I'm going to see, so I have no issue. I assume at this point you have literally not refunded a single not person. Not one single person. <laughs> Oh, goodness. Okay, so we do start we with the, the gut, start with the gut, we start there. And then when so you do the blood hormones, is there a certain point where doing like a Dutch test, which I know that you are extremely experienced in reviewing? At what point would a Dutch test make sense for someone? Yeah, I love that. So when it comes down to the Dutch test, if somebody's sex hormones, they come back and they're, I'm like, mm, that's not matching with their symptoms or they're chronically fatigued. They have trouble sleeping. They have blood sugar swings throughout the day um, or they have weird like energy or mood issues like anxiety and depression. That's when I'm like, OK, let, let's pull a Dutch. Let's see what this looks like. And also mm -hmm. it kind of depends. OK, does somebody have a longer period um, or maybe a, a weird, wonky, irregular period? Then I might do something like the Dutch cycle map to see what their hormones are changing like throughout their entire cycle, which gives me a better clinical picture because that Dutch is really a screenshot one day in time. Got it. So basically, let's let's recap this slightly for everyone. So number one, you can be sensitive to several nutrients that your body does not make that you normally either need to get from food or supplements. And if you are deficient, then you've got to get it from, from usually additional supplements. That can cause acne. You can also get acne if you're using topicals in an inappropriate fashion, like you're going on the blogs and possibly just following the directions of somebody who doesn't really know what they're doing and doesn't have experience um, with topicals. Um, you could mix them in the wrong fashion. You could use change forms and it's just not a good fit for your skin. But this becomes increasingly more complicated depending on genetic, your genetic picture, right? And then also too, how, where you are in terms of at least Oh, for a, from a woman's perspective, where you are in your cycle. So your cycle and where you are in it could also increase your sensitivity to those particular nutrients. Is that a is that an accurate That is so recap, good. You should write a book on it. Essentially. <laughs> I don't need to. You already did. <laughs> I because I, I think that it, it is Look, it is complicated. I, I know that everybody wants like some simple, straightforward thing, but this is a great place to begin. If you're really struggling with cystic acne, it might be worthwhile to consider testing out. Um, so what would you do in the case of nutrients? Like, do you have the person stop it? Like, what could somebody do at home if we're just talking about supplements? They're not working with a practitioner, or maybe these are questions to bring to their practitioner. But what if you suspect that maybe it is nutrients or something in your supplements that's causing a flare 
I have people just go cold turkey, cut everything out. Now, it, what's funny is I posted about that multivitamin on Instagram one day, and I kid you not, like 15, 20 people messaged me back and said, okay, I cut my multivitamin out and instantly my acne went away. And I was like, yeah, that's how it is. Mm-hmm. So yes, first and foremost, just go go cold turkey, cut everything out, introduce things and give it at least 72 hours because it can take that long, those three days for acne to flare up. For some people, like for me, I'll know within 12, but give it three days, go slow and reintroduce your supplements. And so if you find that the current multi, for example, that you're taking is causing a problem, does that mean like all multis are off the table or you're just going to have to either find something different that does work or talk with your practitioner or your doctor or whomever to help you pick something that won't cause issues? Find something else. I would tell you it's, it's not just the B12. It's not just the biotin. It's the dosages and the types. And it can sometimes be an additive in the multivitamin itself. So just be very careful and don't freak out. You know, Oh, I can't take a multivitamin. Don't be afraid to try something different. Lacey, can I ask you a quick question just in terms of multis? Um, I of noticed course. that some of the, or the quote unquote organic ones that are sold at like Whole Foods, Uh, Some of them are made from a lot of fungal derivatives. (laughs) I don't know if you've noticed that. Do you find that to be problematic? Because for me, when I have a client, especially when they have like this huge, high fungal red flag picture, I'm like, you know what? I just don't even want to chance it. I think we should get you away from things that have all of these fungal based ingredients in them like what's your thoughts on that because I know that there is fungal acne and 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 the fungus among us can cause problems with your skin (laughs) yes if somebody has fungal issues candida something like that then we'll definitely want to go with more of a I don't want to say like, oh, synthetic form, but go with more of a synthetic versus a whole food based form. And what's sad is those fungal ones are really easy to grow for them to make the B12, to make the biotin. Um, And same goes with mushroom products. I mean, they're cheap for them to make. So I do have to switch over to more of those synthetic. I know Designs for Health, they make some of my favorite products. Yeah. So, um, my gosh, my mind is blown. Um, okay, so where can Oh, I forgot to mention one more thing. Oh, please, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Freaking iodine. Okay, Using what about iodized salt. Iodized that salt? That can cause you to have, yes, it can exacerbate cystic acne big time. I totally forgot about that. Um, and I've done that myself when I just think some people have regular salt and I'll douse my food with their iodized salt and the next day, boom, acne. Why do you think that is? Do you think it's because of pre-existing, like a sensitivity to iodine? Or I think it is. I really do. I have not been able to find or figure out why, but all I know is I've seen it in myself and I've seen it in clients. Hmm. I've had clients who are very, and I, when I say very, I mean like extremely sensitive to minerals um, to the point where it will keep them awake at night and cause wow. extreme insomnia and can't, we can't do multivitamins that have any minerals in them. And they can try, sometimes we can get away with like a single mineral supplement, which is annoying because I like to get people on like the, the smallest number of things, but in some right. instances it's not possible because it can't tolerate the amount or the type or whatever that's in things. Um, so I have seen it trigger insomnia and a- anxiety and agitation which is so weird but you know everybody's different we're this is like I think the the frustration and the beauty of the human body that we're all so different and it shouldn't be I think we have this expectation that like why can't I be like everyone else because they seem to have it so easy but we all come into this life with our own um, playing cards that we just have to you got to play what you were dealt and and we all have our own things um, and acne is a tricky one I'm so glad to to let everybody know because I get a lot of questions of like who deals with acne Lacey does Lacey you I do deal- I've been yes. there I've done that <laughs> yes and you have a virtual practice correct I do. Upload Fit Nutrition. I absolutely love chatting about acne, healing acne, because I've been there and I know how frustrating it can be, not only getting rid of it, but getting rid of the scarring from it. Yeah. And and then also, too, if, if people aren't quite ready for one-on-one support, you have this amazing book, The Women's Guide to Hormonal Harmony. And oh, it's a you. huge book. And you can get this on Amazon, correct? 
Yes, it is on Amazon for $30. You can pick approximately 75% of my brain. (laughs) Yes. And what is amazing, um, you guys, is that this is a huge, I mean, it's just, she, this is so filled with so much incredible information. The reviews are amazing on the book. Um, and then also, I believe at the, this time of recording, is, is it not still number one in endocrinology books? I mean, like, it might have, be. Because ah, I know for a be. while you were like number one, like beating out big names because it's not just it. You're not like somebody who's just trendy. Like everybody knows Lacey, let's fire. But like you have legitimately amazing information that is based oh, in research and science and a ton of experience working with clients. Um, practitioners, you even train practitioners on how to understand Dutch testing and all sorts of stuff. So you're very well respected. And I, I just think you're such an asset to the community and especially for people who are struggling with hormonal issues and acne and all sorts of stuff. You are an amazing gift and I'm so grateful that we've become friends and we're colleagues and we get to collaborate on projects like this. So I I encourage- you're making my heart so happy, (laughs) Jennifer. You're the best. Thank you. That means the world to me. You're welcome. And thank you so much for spending the time with us today. We really appreciate it and hopefully we can have you come back sometime. Yes, thank you so much. And you guys, if you have any questions, I mean, I live up in my DMs. So I am at Faith and Fit on Instagram. Don't hesitate to shoot me a question. I'm so grateful for having Lacey back on the show and that she shared this topic idea with me, which I absolutely love. And it was certainly eye-opening because I don't work with acne and it's helpful for people out there to understand that it could actually be some nutrients that you started taking or a change in your multivitamin that may be the trigger for the resurgence of acne. For all the resources, how to reach Lacey, how to get her book, you can head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 202. And if you feel so inclined, if you have a question or comment, leave it there so we can keep the conversation going. Then take a moment and make sure to share this episode with someone you know who's struggling with acne and hasn't considered that it could be supplementation that is actually making their acne worse. And lastly, if you haven't done so yet, head on over to your podcast platform of choice, rate, and review the Healthy Skin Show, sharing why you really love and appreciate the show, and hit the subscribe button. That way you never miss a week of inspiration, hope, research, tips, and all sorts of strategies to help you rebuild healthy skin. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I look forward to seeing you in the next episode.